Hey everyone, hope you are doing well. In this video, we will look into the new Go High Level Advanced Workflow Builder. This is a new release. They just released it on the Level Update 2025 and we will look into it. We will see what it is all about and how to use it in the best way possible. So this Advanced Workflow Builder is not enabled by default. What you need to do is on the agency level, first you need to go to settings and you need to go to labs. And I'm still on the agency level. I haven't navigated to any sub account by the way. And then here under labs, you'll go to sub account and search for advanced workflow. This one, advanced builder for workflows. And then say activate feature. And then you will need to select the sub account you need to enable it in. So I think I have a sub account called Go High Level Automation Training. So I'll just enable this advanced workflow builder in this sub account so if i go to save now we will navigate to that sub account let's just go for high level automation training so i have a sub account i'll just click on it and then navigate to the sub account level now what happens is if i go to automation and try to create a new automation let's just create a folder called advanced workflow and hit create let's go to that and then create a new workflow start from scratch like always and now if we look at the top left side we can see there's a new option called standard builder so click on this and navigate to the advanced builder now you can see it's changed it's not our same old workflow builder anymore it's the new workflow builder so let's just try to create a simple automation let's say we have a form in this sub account and we want to create a form submit automation let's get out of it go to sites go to forms and let's say we have a form here called contact form. Let's assume that we have implemented this form or embedded this form in our website. Whenever this form is submitted, we need to perform a bunch of automation. Now, let's just remember the name, contact form it is. And then we will go to now automation. We'll go to advanced workflows. Let's go to the workflow we just created and then rename this workflow form submit automation. We will click on this first step and then it will ask us, is it a trigger or an action? Like always, we'll work with the trigger first because the trigger is what executes the workflow and the actions are whatever gets executed based on the trigger. So we will click on add trigger and now we will search for form submitted and then we will select the form from here saying the form is contact form. Now this workflow will execute whenever the form is submitted. And then if you want to move it around, you can just click on the selection mode over here and then just change your view like this. Now we will just go back to the nodes. So this is a node. It's a node based system. The old one, it used to be a tree based system, but this one is a node to node. If you have used N8N, you know what I'm talking about. Or also Make. Make is also a node based system where you can connect nodes together. Now what you can do is when the form is submitted, what do we want to do? We want to get a notification that our form was submitted on the website. Hey everyone, just wanted to take a quick moment to share my school community where if you join you get to ask me questions about issues you're facing on Go High Level Ads Automation AI. You can also be a part of the weekly coaching sessions where I conduct training on many different topics and we do a Q&A session after that. Besides, you get free access to a lot of my courses that I'm not uploading on YouTube anymore. Some of them you can already see on the screen. Also, there are members only discounts. If you join, you get 50% off on my courses, my snapshots, my funnels, everything. That's pretty much what I want to share. See you on the other side. So we will click on this plus icon and then do internal notification. And then we want to get an email notification. Let's say this is going out from our company name. So this is basically in the notification what the name will be. So I'll say business X. This is the name of the business info at business X.com. This is the from email. The email address this notification is going out from. Who is it going out to? Let's say custom email. It's going out to notifications or, you know, receive at businessx.com. We will say new contact form submission and we will say hello, new contact form submission. Let's say name, email, and phone number. We'll call it contact full name. So we are just dynamically generating the form submit data here through custom values. So we will select contact name, contact email, contact phone. Best regards. This is the name of the business. This is a notification now what we can do is we can add another action called send an email there we go we have a send email here if you don't find it you can just type for it send email and this email is going out to the person who submitted this form so this is basically an email confirmation that we received your inquiry so similarly we can just say business x this is the name of the business info at business x email of the business thank you for your inquiry we will say hi and then again dynamically generate the name of the contact or just the first name of the contact say thank you for your inquiry we will Okay, bye to you ASAP. Say business. So 
This is an email confirmation that's going out to the person who submitted the form. You can write a better version of it. I'm just showing you the technical side. That's it. Now, what else we can do is we can just save it and get out of it for a second. Go to opportunities. Let's see if we have a pipeline created for this already. All right. So we have a sales pipeline. If you don't have a pipeline, you can just quickly go to pipelines. Create a pipeline. It's basically where your leads will show up in different stages. So if you have a business and you have a customer journey in your business, like new leads come in, they get contacted, they book a consultation they attend the consultation they don't attend the consultation you send them a proposal you close them so you can just create all these stages and just hit create and what I've done is I already have a sales pipeline which I've created here newly contacted appointment book cancelled no show and a bunch of other stages now what I want to do is when the form is submitted I want to add an opportunity here automatically so I'll just go to automation go to advanced workflows form submit automation and add another node instead of clicking in plus you can also just right click on anywhere and go to actions menu and search for create or update opportunity so i'll say create or update opportunity now in the pipeline sales pipeline and in the pipeline stage new lead i want to create an opportunity and the name of the opportunity will be the name of the contact so if you look at my opportunity i'll show you this shortly the status will be open which basically means that we haven't sold anything to this person yet the value is basically an estimated lifetime value of this lead so we can say thousand dollars like if this lead has a potential of buying thousand dollar worth product or service from us the opportunity value is thousand right so you can keep these things closed save action and just put it somewhere here now what we can do is we can just drag a node to another like this so we can connect them and then we can adjust their placement this is pretty cool right so this is the new advanced workflow builder now what we can do is we can go back to opportunity pipelines. So this is basically the name of the contact. That's why we put opportunity name as the contact name. All right. So what else can we do? We can also add a tag in this. So we can just click on this and then say tag, add contact tag. We will say website contact form. So we are adding a tag when this person or when this prospect submits the form on the website. That's why we are tagging them as website contact form. So in the future, if we want to filter out the people who submitted the contact form on the website, we can just filter by this tag and everyone will show up in the contact area. So we will hit save. We can also add an assigned user to this lead. So if we have multiple people in this count, let's just go to settings and let's go to my staff. Let's see if we have anyone here. We have Haseeb and John Smith. Let's say John Smith is the business owner or the sub accounts representative or whoever is doing sales in this sub account. What we want to do is when a new lead comes in, in this workflow, we can add an action called assign to user. So we will just add in between. So we can add nodes in between any of these two nodes. So we can just go to this stage over here and click on plus and say sign to user. And who's the user we're assigning this to? John Smith. We can say add task. So we are adding a task for John. So we will say follow up with contact name this is the name of the task we are assigning a task to john smith saying that you need to follow up with this person who submitted this contact form we will say the description of the task is contact full name as inquired via website contact form please follow up assign to contact assigned user because by now this contact has an assigned user who's john and due in we can say let's say two days this task is due in two days and now john will have an assigned task and then john will whenever john logs into his high level account this sub account in the dashboard john will see there's an assigned task and the same task will be also visible in the lead connector app if john is using that so these are the types of things we can do using the new advanced workflow builder it's visually changed but the stuff that we used to do using the old builder is still the same. So it still has a trigger. It still has actions. It still has branching. We will look at branching shortly. And all the actions still the same. In fact, they added some more actions here. So if you look at the actions, go through all these, they have added a bunch of other actions. Like definitely there are new WhatsApp actions, which is pretty cool. And also there's a few things over here. The workflow AI stuff is really amazing. Maybe we'll make some videos on it in the future. And there are some other opportunity actions as well you can perform. These are the Facebook and Google conversion tracking, offline conversion tracking stuff. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Actually, the new workflow builder not just visually changed, to be honest, they added a bunch of stuff to it. It's really amazing to see how fast they are changing and how fast they're upgrading. So that's basically how you create workflows in the new workflow builder. Now, what if you have a workflow using the previous workflow builder? Let's just go ahead and create a template workflow. Let's say we want to create an appointment confirmation reminder. So let's just 
add this stuff. So this is the old workflow builder, right? You can see there's a trigger and there's the appointment confirmation reminder. Now this trigger is basically executing when someone books an appointment in any of the calendars in the sub account. They receive confirmation, they receive a bunch of reminders. What we can do is we can also add create or update opportunity by adding them to a pipeline stage. So we will say sales pipeline and say appointment booked. Contact name will be the opportunity name and the opportunity value can be the name thousand. Status can be open. Let's say we want to switch it to the new advanced workflow builder. So in order to switch an old workflow to the new builder, simply what we need to do is just go to advanced builder and let's navigate to that. That will basically change your old workflow to the new builder. Now, if you click on this format tree, it will basically format it to the correct placement. So this is basically it. Now, if you want, you can actually change the looks of it, right? So I'll just do it like this. If you want to see all of them together, you can just move their placements around and place them like this, which is pretty cool, to be honest. Zoom out. There we go. And that's it. Let's see. We have two more. Place them like this. There you go, right? So actually it looks better now because you don't have to keep scrolling through and then going up and down, left and right to see what the other actions are. You can look at them altogether. It depends on you however you want to place them and you know what's the best way for you to visualize them. That's how you convert an old workflow to the new advanced workflow builder. So we will just hit publish and hit save. Another cool thing I wanted to show you is now you don't have to get out of this workflow to get into a new one. What I mean by that is if you come to the left side over here, there's a new option called workflow switcher. So if you click on this, if we want to now go back to the automation we were working on a few minutes ago, like the form submit automation, we'll just click on this and this will take us back to the form submit automation. So we are back in that automation. Now, if you want to go back to the appointment confirmation reminder one, just come here. It basically opens up a new tab for that. But yeah, this is actually pretty cool to know that you, you don't need to get out of this workflow to get into a new one. If you just want to work on multiple workflows at once that are interconnected, this feature actually helps you do that really easily. Also, another thing is if you come over to the tick mark over here on the left side, if your workflow has any semantic or technical errors, it basically shows up here. Like, for example, uh, what could be a good use case for this? Let's say you're sending an internal notification to the users, but this sub account does not have any user. So what will happen is if you somehow publish this workflow, it will throw an error saying that you're trying to send an in internal notification to the users in this account, but this account does not have any user. So this is just an example. There could be hundreds of other use cases where the workflows could have an error and this workflow error debug log basically shows you all the errors. So you need to fix those before you publish this and take it to the live environment. All right, so the next update I wanted to talk about is the workflow AI, not using AI in workflow, but using AI to create workflows. So if you click on this build using AI, let's say I want to create a workflow like a seven day drip sequence for someone who inquired via the contact form in the website and we are just following up with them. So let's say create a seven day drip sequence for those who inquired on the website or in the website contact form. The first three emails should go out one each day. The next four emails will go out every two days. Now, if you do this, it will start generating a workflow. Now, just to save time, I actually created one. So this is basically a workflow created using AI. So we will just close this. And as you can see, they actually sent us a summary of what was created by AI. Now, this is a workflow that's entirely created using AI. Wait one day before sending first email, wait one day before between one and two. So it's basically waiting one day for each email to go out. So every day it's sending one. Now, if we want to switch it to the advanced builder, we do it like this. There we go. So we have it in the, the advanced builder now. All we need to do is just select the filter in this form. And now that we have the structure of it, we can just go ahead and start tweaking the emails, like what we want to actually say in these email follow-ups. It gives you a really, really strong foundation. So you don't have to spend time in creating the workflow, but just to tweak the content in it. It's good to know that you can use AI to create workflows, which will save so much of our time. So that's pretty much what I wanted to share in this video, guys. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to cover anything specific about Go High Level Workflows or any of these level up updates, and I'm more than happy to do it. So subscribe if you're new to the channel. I will see you in the next one.